is that, there we go. I got a new earpiece. So yes, it's a little louder, and if I turn my head in any direction, you can hear me no matter what now. Today is the day the Lord has made, so let us rejoice and be glad in it as we worship our Lord with the divine service setting. One this morning, uh, the only announcement uh, for worship is that our uh, first communion hymn is the doxology hymn, so we'll rise uh, in reverence for, for the final verse in that hymn. So we begin worshiping our Lord this morning with our opening hymn, How Wide the Love of... Yes, John? Okay, oh. Yes, if you do have to go to the bathroom during church, our sewer system's kind of backed up. Um, so there is no fellowship hour today, but uh, if you can hold it in. <laughs> if you can't, don't worry. It's okay. Just don't flush the toilet at all um, because it's, we're getting it taken care of tomorrow. But yeah, for now, our sewer system is backed up into the church this morning. So thank you, John. We begin worshiping our Lord this morning with our opening hymn, How Wide the Love of Christ. We rise as you're able to do so. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. 
Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all of your sins as a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority. I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the Kyrie. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Can you hear me? There. Okay. 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 Sorry. We had some issues this morning. We had to pray, so we had to figure it through. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, we, you know we live in the midst of so many dangers, and in our frailty we cannot stand upright. Grant strength and protection to support us in all dangers, and carry us through all temptations. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord and Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading for the fourth Sunday after Epiphany is from Jeremiah chapter 1. Now the word of the Lord Yahweh came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, behold, I do not know how to speak, for I am only a youth. But the Lord Yahweh said to me, Do not say I am only a youth, for to all to whom I send you, you shall go. And whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of them. For I am with you to deliver you, declares the Lord Yahweh. And the Lord Yahweh put out his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord Yahweh said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have set before you this day over nations and over kingdoms, to pluck up and to break down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. This is the word of our Lord. Be the epistle for today is from 1 Corinthians chapters 12 and 13. I will show you a still more excellent way. 
If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers, and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith, so as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all I have, and if I deliver up my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part, but when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I spoke like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I gave up childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face, now we know in part, and I shall know fully, even as I have been fully known. So now faith, hope, and love abide, these three. But the greatest of these is love. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise for all the William verse in our gospel reading. St. Luke, the fourth chapter. Jesus went down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and he was teaching them on the Sabbath, and they were astonished at his teaching, for his word possessed authority. And in the synagogue there was a man who had the spirit of an unclean demon, and he cried out with a loud voice, Ha! What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And when the demon had thrown him down in their midst, he came out of him, having done him no harm. And they were all amazed and said to one another, What is this word? For with authority and power he commands the unclean spirits, and they come out. And reports about him went out into every place in the surrounding region. And he arose and left the synagogue, and entered Simon's house. Now Simon's mother-in-law was ill with a high fever, and they appealed to him on her behalf. And he stood over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her. And immediately she rose and began to serve them. Now when the sun was setting, all those who had any who were sick with various diseases brought them to him. And he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. And demons also came out of many, crying, You are the Son of God! But he rebuked them and would not allow them to speak, because they knew that he was the Christ. And when it was day, he departed and went into a desolate place. And the people saw him and came to him, and would have kept him from leaving them. But he said to them, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God to the other towns as well, for I was sent for this purpose. And he was preaching in the synagogues of Judea. This is the gospel of our Lord. May we say as we join in praising our Lord with him where charity and love prevail.
grace and peace be to us away from God our Father, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the helper of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lesson consideration this morning is our continuation in the book of 1 Corinthians, now getting into chapter 13. In the name of Jesus Christ, dear people of God. So our, our lesson for this morning is a very popular passage of Scripture. Now it speaks about love and it does so beautifully. And what it describes is something that is actually scarcely have ever seen among people. Well, that's a wonderful idea. You know, it's often used as wedding scripture by people who actually don't understand it. And if anything, have no intention of following what it teaches. But they use it because of what sounds good. It speaks about love. Well, this morning, we're actually going to look at what it really reveals. And what it reveals is what Paul calls a still more excellent way. As the love in 1 Corinthians 13 is the way of agape, perfect, divine love. And Paul starts it off this way. Without love, I am nothing. None of the things I do have any power or importance without love. You hear any of this? Or, you know, someone inside of us is, cries out and says, well, surely there's something I, that I do, do that counts somehow. Paul says, no, but without this love, this perfect love, the sort of love that God has shown us and given towards us, none of it matters. It's useless and possibly even counterproductive if you do without this type of love. Even the best we have and do in our best intentions is nothing without a genuine God-like love. See, without love, all the words that we say, whatever languages we say them in, are no more than just an irritating gong or clanging symbols. But surely we say, though, if I've learned all the doctrines and I've studied scripture back and forth, and I know things, well, I'm at least part way there. But Paul says, ah, I am nothing. Even if I know everything, even if God himself is speaking through me, I'm still nothing if I do not have love. And yeah, we need prophecy, we need knowledge. But they're not enough by themselves. They're not even significant without a godlike love. We say, well, faith, though. If I have faith, I'm safe because, you know, we're saved by grace through faith. Well, Paul says that even this is not enough. Even if I have enough faith to go move mountains by telling them to get up and go throw yourself into the sea, I'm still nothing. Because faith is not genuine without God-like love. So what I say, what I know, what I believe is, it's not enough. Well, maybe surely if I have my actions, if I do good with good intentions, they're, and they're consistent with faith and all, well, then I'm secure, then I know I'm good. Once again, it profits me nothing if it's done without God-like love. Even if I were to sell all my possessions and give it to the poor, or if I suffered horribly for the faith, it does no good if it's all out of, if it's not out of love. I can still miss the mark. I can still fail to be a genuine Christ-like person if I don't have His love. Because without His love, I am nothing, I can do nothing, and I have nothing. I must have his love. <clears throat> this is where it gets interesting, where Paul really reveals this about 1 Corinthians 13. He's not writing about us, in it, first and foremost. He's writing about God's love. He's writing about real love that's not corrupted by sin. He's writing about love that's not the pathetic and pale copy of love that, you know, like gets jabbered into love songs or gets written about love stories. Or, and it's not all the warm, squishy love feelings that you see on the big screen. That's not this love in 1 Corinthians 13. Mm -hmm. See, God's telling us about his love for us. He's revealing his love for us and the love that he would have us live out then for one another in Jesus Christ. We have his love in each and every one of us. Because God gave it to us. He pours his own out into us. He instills it in us. 
along with the Holy Spirit, when he made us his own. So Paul is challenging us to then think more like mature grown-ups, to see clearly the face of the truth that actually is revealed through first, this love of 1 Corinthians 13. And what is the truth about this agape, God-like love? Well, the first truth is that this agape love is actually an act of will. It's not primarily emotion. Oh, your emotions are involved. Yes, there are emotions there. It's who God made us to be. But they are incidental in this love. See, this agape love in 1 Corinthians 13 is actually a love of intellect and will. It's a love which sees to be loved for all their glory and, honestly, for all their shame. But such agape love then sees the need of the one that is loved and intelligently plans to meet that need or multiple needs. And then the one who loves what this agape loves parts the plan into action to then meet those needs, and that plan comes without any regard for their own circumstances or personal risk or cost, all for the sake of the other that will be loved. That's this agape, perfect love that Paul is revealing to us. And the love Paul's writing about is not simply just like God's love for us. It is the love which God has for us and what he has poured out on us through Jesus. The only way we can have this love for others is if God first pours his love into us until it runs over and flows out of us. See, as Christians, we don't see the cup half full or half empty. No, no, no. As Christians, we see the cup running over. Our cup overflows and runneth over with his love. And not that it trickles down into the next cup. No, it flows into the next person's cup. So that their cup is overflowing to the next person. And the next person of God's love for us. We love because he first loved us. Because he saw our need of sin. And he planned to do the impossible. Because that is what we need to be done for us. Yes, he planished to punish sin. He saw the sin, the wrongdoing we did, and thereby remained just and holy. And yet he still rescued us from the guilt and punishment of our sins. He saw the greater need in his grace and mercy for us. So that he sent his son to be one of us, as we just celebrated a month ago. God, in human flesh, fully human while still fully God, and they said it couldn't be done. They said nobody can do that. There's no way God can come in human flesh. It's just logically impossible. <laughs> but God says, uh, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. And thank God they are. Because God found a way that many, even many of those who call themselves Christians, said was impossible. Even today they still say it's impossible. For God sent his son to be born of a woman. To grow up and keep the, his laws perfectly. So that then he could march himself to the cross. To suffer for us. To bear the wrath of God against our sins on himself. To die the death that we earn. To bleed out for us. So that he could give us our needs. A forgiveness of sins. To give us the need to all who believe in him eternal life and salvation with him. That is the love that Paul is writing about. So when you see first, when you read 1 Corinthians 13, see it through the cross. Because that is that perfect agape love. Because without that love, without that, we are nothing. Without Christ's love, we have nothing. There's really no point in us existing without Jesus Christ. Because without this love flowing through us, we are nothing no matter what we do or who we are. So we need that love constantly and thankfully. He graciously gives it to us all the time. Because agape is essential and it is eternal. We need it from God and God has given it to us.
Because if we are gods, through Jesus, well, this love must be part of us because God is love. And we cannot be anything or do anything that is significant or lasting and valuable without his love in us. Because a true Christ-like father is filled with this love and goes out and lives this love. Not as emotion, but as a spirit given and spirit work act of both the intellect and the will. So being a Christian, therefore, it's actually deliberate. It's not a uh, doing what comes natural kind of thing. You have to deliberately and willfully live out this love that God has put in you as his dear beloved children. The great thing about it all is that God is still the source and the power behind this love for us and behind this love in us and behind this love that comes from us. He works in us, and he's working in us right now through his word and the sacraments. Yeah, you may not feel like all of a sudden all those emotions coming inside you, but that's okay. Because this is still God's love right here. Given and shed for you for your forgiveness and eternal life. This is the visible signs of his love for you. And today, having received the riches of God's love, we therefore will be more like him. We act like him, with patience, with forgiveness, with endurance. If you go out there and forgive somebody and do it without love, you haven't forgiven them. And I mean the love of God. And thank you for being patient with us this morning, too. <laughs> As we're patient in love for God's service coming to us here this morning. We patiently endure in God's love because... <laughs> How many times has he patiently endured for us? Especially on the cross. And then we must act with others. We must act with our neighbors, other people in mind as the objects of that love then. It's not about ourselves, it's about them now. As we go out and show that love to others. And it's no more clear when Jesus commanded his disciples to go love one another. But when I say we must love, it's not like a, a law, a rule to be followed. Not like I tell the girls, you know, make sure you say you're sorry to each other and forgive each other. No, it's not like that. This love within us is so powerful and so persuasive that it transforms those whose hearts and souls that it rests upon. So it's not a law bearing on us that, oh, I need to go love like Jesus loves. It transforms us and then go love like Jesus has loved us. So yes, the revelation this morning of this, this lovely and popular passage of Scripture it's, is the revealed way of love, of real, genuine, Christ-like love. Anything else is really an exception. And as some of all love, Jesus said it more simply and just as beautifully. By all this, all will know that you are my disciples. If you have love, my agape love for one another. For love is the greatest of these. Amen. Now may the agape love of God our Father guard your hearts, minds, your whole being. And our Savior Jesus Christ, he fills you with the Holy Spirit. If he has received this agape love this morning, and go overflow with it out there. Amen. We rise now as we confess together our faith the words of the Nicene Creed. <clears throat> I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, 
Let us pray to our Heavenly Father for this day, for all UP churches, for our nation, those who serve, those who need healing, those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries, those coming to the Lord's table, and for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus, and for all people according to their needs. Gracious Creator, forgive our sins, especially the false acts that cannot pass for real love. Enable us to reflect your agape love, which is patient and kind, does not envy or boast, is not arrogant or rude, and does not insist on its own way. Fill our lives with good works that truly care for others. Lord, in your mercy, Holy One, your Son taught with authority. Through those called into this holy ministry, use that authority to forgive sins, strengthen faith, and empower lives with good works, that the people of this world would see your love in us. Bless all UP churches, their missions, and their people, their leaders, and all of their pastors giving them the ability to meet the needs that arise as they do the work you've given them to do in proclaiming the same truth of your word. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, you know all things. And the words of your mouth stand over nations and over kingdoms, able to pluck up and break down, destroy and overthrow. Rule by your mights, that our nation may be governed and preserved. Do not let us be dismayed as citizens in this world or of your kingdom, for you are king above all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, arise. Forget not the afflicted, but hear their desires and strengthen their hearts, including those who desire prayers in our bulletin, for the family and loved ones of Pastor Bodie, and those we name in our hearts now. Give your abiding comfort, strength, and peace in every circumstance. That in Christ we shall not die, but live and declare his works. Lord, in your mercy. Your Gracious God, we give you thanks for the gift of marriage and family. Bless those celebrate birthdays and anniversaries this week, including Sarah Freeman, Michael Girardi, and John Brown. That as they celebrate another year of life for marriage, you continue to watch over them, providing for all their needs and granting them joyful celebrations. Grant them another year of life for marriage to come with be your will, so they may continue to cherish, grow, and abide in your love and saving grace. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Father, we praise you for Pastor Bodie and for all who have lived and died with faith in Christ and now rest in your presence. Unite us with your Son and with those saints as we eat and drink his life-giving body and blood at this altar. Grant us repentant hearts as we receive your gift, and strengthen us to care for the needs of others in the way of Jesus Christ our Savior. Lord, in your mercy, your all these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who was born, died, and rose again, and ascended to now live and reign with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forevermore. Amen. We continue singing the common doxology. service here at Trinity and the tri-parish and throughout the entire world. Continue to bless us and be with us 
as we do all things necessary for your glory and honor. For you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we pray and glorify you now and forevermore. Amen. We continue now with the service of the sacrament.
Simeon, the lone Simeon. Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this wonderful gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you will strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and agape love for one another. In Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord and Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, our God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his faith. Continue to fill you with this everlasting agape love. Amen. You may be seated as we join in praising the Lord with him, love in Christ is strong and living. Sunday or script order is going in. Uh, so again, I'm going to collect that next week for that order. This Saturday, we are streaming a live event from Lansing. Um, it's a called Theological Conference. Now, you think of theology, theology, you think, well, it's just for pastor and leaders and those people. Ah, did you know you all are theologians? Yes. If you study and know God, you are a theologian. And so this conference isn't meant for me. I have my own conferences. This conference Saturday is meant for you all. And the theme is beyond the walls of Jesus. And especially with everything that's coming in our culture and government and everything else, we're going to hear some great speakers tell us how we either defend the walls of the church or how do we reach beyond the walls 
with this agape love of God. So Saturday, 8.30 to 3 o'clock, we'll still get done. You have plenty of time in the afternoon for other things. Uh, but it's free here. We're going to have, there's a light breakfast provided coffee, and then we're going to have lunch. Uh, Subways again. Yes, thank, thank you, Renee. Um, so again, it's all free. You just come and show up. Uh, Pastor Burhop is coming with a few folks from uh, Sault Ste. Marie. And so it's part of it is, you know, we get this great learning and we get to watch it all on the screen. But it's also part of the commodity of being together to watch this and discuss these important issues that are coming our way in the years ahead. So again, if you're able to join us, that's this Saturday here, live stream again on our TV here. And then uh, the Super Bowl is coming up on February uh, 13th, and no big deal for me anymore. I'm like, no. <laughs> but uh, that's okay, I get to enjoy commercials more of them. Anyway, here at Trinity, we do the Super Bowl, S-O-U-P, and so we're going to collect cans of soup again for the next two Sundays. We'll bless them during the Super Bowl, um, and then give it to the local pantry. So again, bring some cans of soup in um, for the Super Bowl. Uh, we, again, we don't have any fellowship hour today. Sorry about that. Um, hopefully, it'll get taken care of this week, and uh, it'll be all fixed for uh, next week's Sunday then. So that, we go in peace. Sure. Thank mm -hmm. you.